What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are taking another look at the Glass Note Insights weekly newsletter. This week on Chain, week 29 of 2021. All right, we're halfway through the year. And before we get started, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Uh, while you're down there, if you want to listen to this weekly, because I don't know anybody else doing this right now, just reading this to you, and it's the least I can do for um, all my long-term subscribers while I have not been making a lot of content lately. But anyway, maybe they'll inspire me to make more. Um, again, turn on the post notifications down below so you know when the next video comes out. That way you'll be able to listen along. Uh, leave me a comment, uh, concern, a grievance, anything you got to say. I totally appreciate it. My one request is that you please be civil in your discourse. That'll be great. Uh, kindness and compassion are absolutely free. And if we all use them just to edit our responses, our commentary, everything we do online, uh, we're so often quick to just fire things off. We can also uh, help make this world a better place. I truly believe that. Okay, so let's get into it. As the probability for high Bitcoin market volatility increases, we analyze the bull and bear cases using market and on-chain metrics. All right, week 29. The Bitcoin market continues its low volatility consolidation this week with trading prices between a high of 34,564 and a low of 31,125. As the market tests the lows of a significant on-chain support zone, trans transaction activity remains depressed and hodling behavior shows remar remarkable resilience. We have an extremely divided market and one with a likely expansion of volatility just around the corner. As such, in these weeks, uh, this week's edition, we explore both the bull and bear cases using a combination of market and on-chain metrics. Here we see inside the pink zone to the far right. This is the week in which we've been trading. Very tight little zone. I mean, it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. This is why the volatility is probably around the corner. To start out our analysis, we will begin with a UTXO realized price distribution metric, which presents an on-chain volume profile across pricing buckets, zones. Uh, pricing buckets. Zones where significant clusters of volume arise can indicate that a large number of coins changed hands at those prices, and thus represents a concentration of cost basis. Between 3100 and 34.3k, sorry, 31,000 and 34.3 thousand coin volume equivalent to 10.5% of the circulating supply, 1.973 million BTC have transacted, outsizing the previous high volume known as established in the 65 to 60k range. However, the market is trading at the lower end of the support node, and there are a few comparatively um, there are few comparatively few on-chain support levels below 18.8. Okay, that's 18,800. So if we look at this chart here, we can see what they're talking about. That these nodes, very high between here. There's not too many other nodes down here, and this is where. Um, things are looking. It's 11k. Somebody else is pointing this out today in, a, in some uh, probably some clickbaity stuff on their YouTube channel. But let's keep going. The bearish case for Bitcoin. We will start our bearish case by considering institutional demand flows which continue to be a necessary source of capital inflows to reach and sustain higher valuations. In the limelight this week will be, will be the performance of the Grayscale GPTC product with around 31,900 GBTC shares unlocking through the remainder of July. The GPT, the GBTC market price continued to trade at a notable discount last week, ranging between minus 11% and down to minus 15.3%. While the discount has recovered from the absolute lows of minus 21.3 to NAV, any significant and persistent discount suggests lackluster demand 
and can also attract capital away from spot BTC markets. The purpose ETF has also seen a slowdown in net inflows this week after a period of relatively strong demand through May and June. The week closed with the largest net outflow of minus 90.76 BTC since mid-May, similar to the GBTC product. This indicates institutional demand remains relatively weak across these regulated uh, products. You can see this previous slowdown, up, 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 and now we're seeing new uh, ETF inflow slowing down. Last on the inst institutional demand side, OTC desk holdings have seen a net inflow of around 1,780 BTC over the last two weeks, moving against the structural trend of, our, of outflows in place since this, uh, November of 2020. It remains to be seen whether this inflow, or net inflow is just a short-term impact or the early stages of reversal in the balance of supply and demand. On-chain activity remains extremely muted this week with mempools clearing, the transaction volumes continuing to fall as the mempool empties the average block, si block size has fallen by 15 to 20 percent down to 1.1 million bytes. Oh, well, yeah, million, million bytes. 1.1 million bytes. There we go. Clear it up just so you're clear. <laughs> This indicates that demand for Bitcoin block space on the uh, and on-chain settlement is low, mine blocks are not full, and the utilization, utilization of the network is relatively low. Yeah, if you have one megabyte. Okay, well, I guess it's, yeah, one million bytes, one megabyte. Um, they're, yeah, pretty full. So... Entity adjusted on-chain volume 14-day EMA basis remains down 65.8% from the highs in April. The Bitcoin network is currently settling 5.3 billion per day compared to the 15.5 in daily volume settled on the 2021 peak. This demonstrates a relatively low demand for value settlement remains in place. see here that drop off like back in May high on chain settlement drop 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 okay of the transaction volume that's being settled a dominant majority appear to be coins realizing losses if we compare the total value of realized losses and profits we see losses pink have consistently been larger than profits in green since the sell-off in May Median losses this week were around 353 million per day, more than 2.2 times greater than the 158 million per day in realized profits. Whilst these volumes are much lower than the two capitulation events, 160 billion and 744 million respectively, this demonstrates that investors holding underwater positions continue to spend and sell their coins. We can. <laughs> um, or maybe they just think, all right, we're going to buy somewhere lower. Well, let's keep reading. We can also assess how much of the coin supply remains underwater to gauge how much supply may become additional sell side pressure. The chart below shows that approximately 6.2 uh, 6 million BTC, BTC equivalent to 33% of the circulating supply is currently holding unrealized loss. See, it's pretty big. Okay. Finally, to close out our bearish case, we can see that the number of new on-chain entities is still down 28.6% from the highs set in February of 2021. The decline is not yet as severe as it was in the 2017 blow-off top. However, it remains to be seen if this metric stabilizes or declines further. So you can see from this, the 2017 peak, how quickly it dropped off into the low and then slowly over time be recovering from our 2021 peak down to where we're at we've certainly just visually i can tell we've passed more time than it took so yeah this is interesting we'll have to see time always confirms 
Summary of the bear case. Market is trading at the low end of high on-chain volume cluster with very little cost basis support between 31,000 and 18.8 thousand. The GBTC discount persists, declining purpose ETF inflows and OTC desk inflows suggest lackluster institutional demand. On-chain activity, volume and entities remain significantly down from the highs. Utilization of the Bitcoin network for value transfer suggests low demand. Losses continue to be realized on chain, and a total of 6.2 million are currently held at unrealized loss. These coins may well form overhead resistance and sell pressure. Now for the bull case. Let's go. After painting a relatively bleak picture with respect to immediate demand and network utilization, there remain two, uh, positive signs across many on-chain metrics, particularly longer range indicators and supply metrics. To start, let's return to the idea of on-chain entities, a topic which has been the source of some confusion of late. We define an entity as a unique on-chain cluster of associated addresses. If a cluster of addresses interact and demonstrate heuristic heuristics to suggest a single owner they will be classified as a single entity so that would be like uh, anyone who had multiple addresses and they move things around to those addresses in order to hold a certain position whether it be liquidity provision uh, trading whatever okay uh, this chart below presents three metrics telling a holistic picture for on-chain entities Sending entities, which are going to be in green, uh, receiving entities in pink, and net entities growth blue. All right, so the sending entities in green are often associated with UTXO destruction. Most wallets enforce single-use addresses when spending, which typically reduces the entity count. At preset, uh, or sorry, at present, we see fewer spending entities indicating less spending of UTXOs and a preference for huddling. Receiving entities in pink are the converse, associated with UTXO creation, new owners, and new accumulation. June and July have seen strong growth in receiving entities. New entities growth blue takes the difference between destroyed and created entities. Given destroyed entities is declining and created entities are increasing, we have a positive aggregate net growth. To summarize, more hodling and less spending, likely reflecting an environment similar to dollar cost averaging style accumulation. That's really interesting that net entities is kind of pumping um, because the declining and sending entities is like completely diving. All right. Moving on. To support this observation, we can see that the change net position, uh, the exchange net position change has reverted back to a net outflow after a significant period of net inflows. Exchanges are currently seeing a rate of net outflows of around 36.3 thousand BTC per month. So, yeah, decrease in outflows, exchange inflows, exchange outflows. Okay. So, yeah, more hodling, more not willing to trade. Miners are also demonstrating extreme resilience and desire to accumulate despite the extraordinary costs incurred by the great migration carries on. It is possible that additional sell side pressure from offline distressed miners is being more than offset by the extraordinary profitability by remaining operational miners. More accumulation. If we observe the volume of supply held by strong hands, we can see that hodling appears to be the preferred strategy. Long-term holders currently hold 75% of the cir circulating supply, 6% at a loss, 69% in profit. The bullish squeeze that has, let's see, long-term holders currently hold set love. That's, that's huge. There was something earlier that made me think poorly that said like 33% of something. Let me see, where was that? Yeah. Well, I guess a little bit of this 33% could be held within that uh, 75% technically because they could be adding to their position. Okay. 
The bullish squeeze that started past bull markets has historically been triggered by long-term holdings, holders holding 65%. So that was, I don't know, 2x 2013 or two times in 2013, maybe 75% in 2017, 80% in 2020 of the circulating supply. If the current rate of coin uh, maturation, which is 14.75 uh, thousand BTC per day persists, long-term holders would hold 80% of the coin supply in around two months. Although this is not likely to play so uh, play quite so cleanly since we know many coins from the March through May were spent and sold. Let's see here. Long-term supply is creeping up. Oh, I see. So these previous bull squeezes in 2013, because one was the beginning of 13, the very tail end of 13. And then again in advance of uh, 2017, which was quite a bit of an advance. But these ones seem to like right be just ahead, like months ahead. But again, there was that market back then was much smaller. And now we're seeing this, which was also um, ahead of this. So. Let's see what's in store moving forward. The illiquid supply change metric supports this observation following a dramatic reversal from distribution in May to hodling and accumulation in June through July. Note, positive values in green of this metric are a result of widespread coin dormancy, more illiquid coins with limited spending. Conversely, negative values occur when illiquid coins are spent back into liquid circulation. Finally, to round off the bullish case for Bitcoin, we turn to the realized cap hodl waves, which shows unmistakably indicator, unmistakable indicators of hodling, coin maturation, maturation, and further evidence to the probability of a potential supply squeeze in the works. There are two primary observations, structural multi-month declines in younger coin bands, red and orange, which can only occur when young coins make up a smaller portion of realized value. This occurs when young coins mature and age to become older coins, which creates swelling of older coin bands, which is yellow, three months to 12 months, uh, as the volume of coins held at these, uh, at these stronger hand, long-term holder classified age brackets grows. A decline in these bands without corresponding growth of the next oldest band would start to invalidate this thesis. So in this like kind of colored histogram, you can see the different colorizations. Okay, down at the very bottom, you have greater than 10 years, and then it keeps getting, uh, well, not at the bottom, but this color, which I don't see anywhere. So, but the seven to 10, I don't see either. Probably the five to sevens are right here at the top. Um, so we have a huge band in the six month to 12 month. It's, it's swelling. Interesting. Okay, let's move on. Okay, summary of the bull case. Again, net entity growth remains positive as fewer entities are destroyed and more created. This resembles a dollar cost average style accumulation environment. Next, exchanges have seen net at flows uh, after an extended period of inflows since mid-May. Miners are in net accumulation, suggesting sell pressure due to the great migration is being mitigated or offset by accumulation by profitable miners. Uh, Long-term holders and bull market hodlers appear unshaken by volatility and lower prices. The volume of coins held in a liquid state continues to grow and the potential supply squeeze is coming from a much higher base than the 2000 to 2018 and 19 bear. This demonstrates the remarkable conviction of BTC holders to weather extreme volatility. Wow. See, I really like, I mean, uh, I'll give my personal opinion. I, you know, feel like 
this metric of these long-term holders continuing to huddle along that yes at some point they want to sell but I think they want to be able to sell off less for more and with that strategy they can do that and with more and more um, with this asset becoming and this whole asset class becoming um, closer all the time to potential regulated states that they can use these things um, as collateral and still operate and still do a lot of stuff that this is like you know becomes part of their treasury you know some may argue bitcoin was never created for that but it seems to be you know like it's a new use all right so anyway that is this week's insights by glassnode week 29 thank you for listening i appreciate it again leave a comment down below let me know what you think and i will see you next week peace